Angular has released a new feature in the 17.1 release called signal based inputs and we are going to look at those in this video. So first of all what I want you to look at is Minko's post but essentially you can now get rid of all your getters and setters and even ng on changes within your Angular applications by just replacing your inputs with signal based inputs. So let's have a look at the application that we have. So if you want to follow along you can actually clone this application from github.com slash snir slash ng signal input and once you have cloned this using the link I have a branch for you called start here which is right here so start dash here when you switch to it you can follow along let's have a look at the application that we have right now so here we have a simple application that allows you to add random notifications and also the count up top here also increases so for example if I keep clicking this you can see that all of these notifications show up here and the count also has changed to five now you'll also notice that we have these two buttons here. One of them actually deletes this particular notification. The other one basically toggles it between if you have read the notification or if this notification is unread. So for example, if I click this, you can see that this goes down with this change opacity and I can toggle this again so it comes back up. So you can actually mark all of the notifications as read and the count also decreases when you do so as well. Then you can also click reset and all the notifications are gone. Now all of this is right now working with normal inputs and ng on changes. So let me show you the code actually. Right now we have three components. We have app component, we have notifications manager and the notifications button. Right now if you look at the app component.html you will see that we have this thing as the header up top and then apart from the header we just have inside our main and we should probably call this main instead of div. Inside of main we do have the app notifications manager component. This is what has all the buttons like add notification, reset and even it displays the notifications within inside it. So if I go to its HTML you can see that we are having a UL running a for loop over notifications and then these are the buttons that we just saw for delete and reset. So you can go through all the code and I think you'll find it pretty easy to understand as well. What we have right now is we have in the app component this array called notifications and this is the source of truth for the entire notifications plus the count that we see on the header. So how does this work? We keep the state in the app component and then in the manager we essentially have that as an input and this input when it comes from the parent app component basically is rendered through the for loop. So this essentially is just taking the array and then rendering it. Apart from this, we just have some output emitters. So whenever you click add notification, it emits an event. Same for remove a notification, reset, and also marking notification as read or unread. We basically just emit this out to the app component. And then the app component can listen to all these events like read toggle click, notification added, notification cleared, which basically is inside right here. So notification added, notifications cleared, all of them are being dispatched from notifications manager to the app component. Now when they go inside the app component via these listeners, these change the notifications array, which is the source of truth. So on add notification, this adds a new one to the array. On remove notifications, the array basically filters out the one that we need to remove. And then when we toggle the notification, it essentially basically changes the toggle from read to unread or read to unread and then vice versa as well and when we do clear notification it just resets the whole array now this is all about the manager and the app component how does the count change on the top in the header when we see it right here this basically changes inside the notifications button component so the button component also has to have access to the notifications and this notification is only used for this ng on changes so when we have the ng on changes then we check okay is the notification changing or not because otherwise the unread count cannot be up to date so in order for having the up to date count for the unread for example this one we need to constantly listen via ng on changes to the notifications array and then whenever that changes we basically filter out how many of these notifications have not been read so far and then we update the unread count now this thing can be completely eliminated with signal based input let's try that so first of all when we talk about this button component instead of notifications what we can do is we can go ahead and change this with a normal input. So I'm going to comment this line and here let's go and say we have notifications but these are input and I can actually use input 
which can come from the angular core. So here you can see from the angular core, we are importing this input, which is the input function. Now this input, by just calling this function, we have created a signal. So here you can see it is called input signal and we can define the type here as well, because right now, as you notice, this is unknown unknown. Since we are using TypeScript and we should also be always defining the types, we can say that this is of type notification array and then we are good to go. Now the only thing that would be affected by this or one of the things that would be affected by this is when we use this notifications inside the HTML, we're going to have to use the getter, but we are not really using that here. So we don't really worry about that. What we use notifications for in this whole component is with this ng on changes, but we don't really have to do that at all now because what we can do now is we can change this on read count from a hard coded number to a computed value. So here I'm going to just comment this out and here what we can do is we can say computed. This also comes from angular core and then this essentially is a method inside which I can use any signal and return a value which will be counted as computed. So in this one what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these lines and then paste them here and then uncomment them. So what I want to do is I just want to return this thing right here. So what we are doing here is we are saying, hey, I want to filter on the notifications, but hey, notification is not a normal input now, it's a signal. So I cannot really access it like this notation without just calling this method. So in this manner, when you look at the notifications, it says it's possibly undefined because we are not assigning a initial value to this, but this is the correct syntax. How do we say that this is not going to be undefined? By either providing an initial value or saying that I know what I'm doing by doing this. This is okay, but I don't really prefer this. The better way of this is initializing with an initial array or empty array. So this means that by default, this notification has the value of an empty array, but it's a signal containing that value. But as soon as the value changes, automatically this computed will be changed and this will now be reflected on the UI. Now, when we look at this, you're going to notice that the unread count, what is that? Is that a number just like before? If I mouse over, you're going to see that it is a signal based on number or it's a number signal, so to say, which means that my HTML cannot process this just like this because this is a signal. So we need to call the method right here to get the value and this should be fine now. So if I save everything, save this as well, and I need to now remove the implements ng on changes and I can also remove these things from here and now if I look my application you can see that this seems to work fine so if I add notification you can see automatically everything is being computed and the value changes automatically if we want we can also inspect it because we should be we should be developing apps like developers and not end users that's something that I say all the time so always go in the debugger to see actually what's happening so here I'm gonna go to the button component and inside that, I'm just going to put a breakpoint right here just to know that the computer is actually called when anything changes. For example, if I just remove this guy right here, deleted one, if I delete this, you can see that this value is recomputed. Why? Because the notifications changed in the parent component and this input is a signal input in that manner. So if I move forward, it's going to just go ahead and then delete that and the count will also be changing to four. Now, the funny part here is that when we talk about this input being a signal input, that means that just this input is signal, not necessarily the value that is passed to it. For example, this notifications is a signal input, but what I'm passing to this from the app, which is this notifications array, this is not a signal. So this can be anything. This can be a primitive. This can be an object, array, whatever you want to have it in the parent. But the child component, which is using the input, will treat that value as a signal, which is amazing when you look at this. And it's still right now it is in developer preview. So th things might change. But this seems really interesting on how the Angular team has handled this in a way that the, the top value coming from the parent doesn't have to be a signal, but in the child component, in the current component, it acts like a signal. And if anything changes in the parent, automatically we get this computed and everything working automatically. So we don't really need to worry about that. So I'm going to remove this and you can see that now we don't have to have any on changes. And if anything changes, we'll know about this right away.
One more thing I would like to highlight is that if I was building this application for production, I wouldn't even have this notifications array inside here because the button just has to show a count. It doesn't make sense to pass the entire array into this component and then have a computed and then whatnot. So I would ideally move all of this inside the app component right here, but I'm not doing it because I wanted to show you the signal input and not something else. Because if I do it in the app component, there's no input. App, app component is the top level component. So I hope you get the idea. But we can also do the same thing with input signals in the notifications manager, because right now there also, we are just using a normal input. Now I want to show you something. If I remove this input and if I go here and use a normal input like notifications, and then I can say signals or input just like this. And this input should come from the Angular core. And then if I say this is a signal of type notifications array. So if I say notification array, then now we have a normal signal input. We also need to give this an initial value. So we are going to say that this is going to be an empty array. Now, one thing to fix is that we also need to go here and then we need to change this to use the getter method. And now this should work fine. And the application works pretty flawlessly. Now, one interesting thing is that this input is technically required for this whole component to work. Otherwise, we don't have anything to render at all. But if I go into my app component and I actually remove this from here, you'll see that the app still works. The only problem would be if I add notification, you can see the count up top being increased, but we have nothing to show. How, how do we prevent this? How do we say that, no, this notification array is actually required? Well, in the old method, we could also define it via the inputs by doing something like this. So we used something like input. Let's say we call it, I don't know, uh, noti array. And then if I do this, then I can actually go inside this input and say required true. This was the old method to do this, which means that now the app component HTML will say that the noti array is required. How do we do with the signal based input? So in order to do that, you can go to your manager component and in here as well, I'm going to remove this noti array since we don't need this, but in here as well, we can also say that this is required by just using input dot required. And this is so easy to do when we say required, then that also means that we don't need to provide an initial value because we'll always know that the value will be provided by the parent. So I can remove this and then even in this case, you'll see that we will not have the issue for notifications being undefined or whatnot. So if I just save this, you can see that in the app component, I have this situation where it says required input notifications is not provided. So I can just do this and now everything is happy and the app is essentially running as follows. So I hope this video was useful for you. You learned something new. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about the signals and what is the feature from the Angular team that you have liked the most in the past six months. And if you would like me to talk about anything specific in Angular or create a video about it, let me know in the comments as well. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next video. Hey there, sorry for the shameless plug, but I wanted to share that the application that you're looking at is derived from one of the recipes from the Angular Cookbook second edition which just got published in December 2023. So it's super new, contains everything till Angular version 17. And you can find 80 plus recipes containing a lot of cool projects like this one in the book. And you can find the link in the description. Now we can continue.